What's going on YouTube? It's One Up Supreme again and welcome back to some more Star Citizen. Today is day three of IAE 2952. Today is Aegis Day, one of my most anticipated days of uh of IAE. Um before we start, I just want to point out that memberships are live on the channel. Um if you're interested in that and supporting me in uh in a different way, go ahead and uh, check those out. Uh right now they're pretty bare bones, but uh I will add to them as the uh, channel grows and as I start streaming and stuff. Um, but yeah, let's uh, just get right to it, hey? Because I'm excited about Aegis Day. I really am. Even though when on my way here, I've been thinking, I'm like, man, I think I've flown all the Aegis ships. That's possible. When are they going to put elevator music here? Did my rut row. Okay then, I am completely stupid. Like that's not the case. I don't know how these elevators works anymore, because now the Apex Hall is Aegis and I thought Drake would still be there. Uh, I'm just assuming stuff. But yep, the Apex Hall is on Aegis Dynamics. Cause I went down to Zenith after the elevator work. And I was like, Origin's still like, what the hell? So I tried Apex and it was there, so. I guess tomorrow will be Zenith at the alien for the alien stuff, but look at that. Man, the stance the Reclaimer just gives. So the, the Reclaimer is the biggest flyable ship currently in game. Um, followed closely by the 890 jump from yesterday. All right, let's see what we got here. So in the center, we got the Reclaimer and then the Saber and Saber Comet. Um, down below we have the Nautilus and the Vulcan. On the left side we have the Vanguard variants and then the Bombers, which is the Eclipse and the Retaliator. And on the right hand side we have the Gladius variants and the Hammerhead and then the Avenger variants and the Redeemer. So obviously right in the center, like I said, we have the Reclaimer. Um, honestly, a fun ship to fly just because people are like but but when salvage comes out this thing will be very useful for multi-crew and uh and yeah it's it's just it's gonna be a great ship to fly good luck getting it out of atmosphere though if you're going to spawn this thing as the game stands currently i recommend spawning it out of grim hex and then that's about it like land it in grim hex spawn it in grim hex because I don't know if there's any spaceports that can actually spawn this thing and getting it out of atmosphere is a pain in the ass. I just want to point that out. And then right here, we have my favorite fighters in the game. They are classified as stealth fighters in the medium class, the Aegis Saber. This is the standard Saber. Good looking ship. Best looking ship in the game, in my opinion, too. It's, er, uh, oh, let me rephrase best looking fighter in the game. I don't know what my my, my favorite looking ship is. I, it still might actually be this. But the Aegis Saber is great. It's got four size three hard points and it carries stock uh, two size three missiles or four size three missiles. I think it's two size three missiles. No, I don't know. It's one of the two. Still a, it's just a fantastic ship. And then here is the Saber Comet. Which, there's nothing different between the Saber and the Saber Comet, so I wouldn't recommend, like, if you're going to pledge for it, I wouldn't recommend actually getting this, because you're only getting a a uh, different standard loadout and a paint scheme. And the, the loadouts, you're mo only going to change anyway. The standard loadout on the, on the standard Saber is actually perfect, but I uh, just want to point that out. I actually have a Saber Comet because I love the paint scheme, and I paid that much extra for it. I would not recommend it, but I'm a fan of blue on black and the digital camo just kind of really puts a nice touch on it. So, but there's no difference in functionality between the Comet and the standard Saber. All right, then we're going to go down below and check out the Nautilus. And I forgot what else is down there. There's an alien here. 
think the Nautilus is a mine layer. I don't remember what the other one was. So let's look. Like, I don't remember the name or anything. Do, 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 do. So this looks like it's going to be the Nautilus. No, this is the Aegis Vulcan. What the hell is the Aegis Vulcan? Oh, it's a repair and refuel ship. It's a medium-sized repair and refuel ship. Okay. I don't know much about this thing. Oh, okay, now I recognize it. I was looking at it at the ass, not the front. Okay. Now I recognize it. I don't know much about this ship. I haven't looked much into it because I don't plan on doing that kind of game loop with uh, refuel and repair. I might try it at some point, but I don't know if I'm going to actually like do it as like a full-time gig kind of thing. I'm a bounty hunter. I like combat. I like dogfighting. That's just me. Um, and then we have the Nautilus. This is a mine layer, which I actually think would be interesting. Um, I, for one, I don't know how space mines are going to work. Probably similar to like, like, uh, oceanic mines. But I don't know much about the ship either. I don't, I don't know much about concept ships at all. But uh, I think my mine lane would be in a very interesting game loop, especially uh, when Pyro comes. I think that'd be nice. Having a ship chase you and you just lay a mine and he just blows right into it. That'd be freaking hilarious. <laughs> oh, man. All right, so we're going to go up and then we are probably going to check out uh, probably the right side first with the Aegis stuff and the Gladius. So I don't know what ship I'm going to rent today because I have a Gladius, I have a Saber, I have a Reclaimer, I have a Vanguard. I have all the Vanguards. Um, and the concept ships, obviously, are concepts. I don't know. I have a Warlock, too, like so I have an Avenger. Aegis is my favorite uh, ship manufacturer, if you can't tell already. But this should be where the uh, or the Gladius Hammerhead. Oh yeah, I have a Hammerhead too. I have a Redeemer. I think I have every Aegis ship. Not another thing about it. I even have a Retaliator. Bought in game, not pledged. But I believe. Yeah, let's double check. Yeah, I have all the Vanguards. I have an Eclipse. I have a Retaliator. I have a Gladius. I have a Hammerhead. I have a, a Titan, or I have a. Um. I have an Avenger Warlock, I have a Redeemer, I have a Saber Comet, or Clamp. Yep, I have everything. <laughs> so I don't think I'm gonna be actually renting a ship and flying it around in this one, unfortunately, but, ah, all right. So all the Avengers aesthetically, except for the uh, Titan Renegade, um, have a, or all aesthetically look the same. They have all the same Weapon hard points and all that, and they perform relatively the same, but I'll show you the differences between all three, and then we'll check out the Redeemer last here. So this, I believe, is the standard Titan, or is this the Stalker? This is the standard Titan. The standard Titan is the starter ship. It is, um, it comes in a game package for $70, which is one of the be better game packages on the RSI website. And I do a little bit of cargo running. It's got this big, uh, well, not big, but it's got this little uh, like cargo area. And standard with all the Avenger series, you have a bed to log out in, which is nice. Too bad there's no toilet, but whatever. And then here you have the flight deck. You can also enter the Avenger series once the door doesn't st stop closing in my face. You can also enter all the Avenger series from the cockpit here. We'll just open it up. Open the canopy, open the ladder, and you can get in that way. This, I believe, is the Stalker. Yes, this is the Avenger Stalker. The only difference between this is in the cargo bay, instead of having an open cargo bay, you have prisoner cells in the back, which when the bounty hunting thing becomes a little bit more fleshed out and you're actually able to take live, uh, live bounties, these will come in handy immensely. Trust me, I, I already want to like lock some of my friends in here just, just because I want to bully them. I think that'd be hilarious. And now that uh, Darth probably heard me say that, he's probably gonna try to get me in, a, in one of those things because it, it's Darth. But yeah, you can also enter it from the uh, cockpit as well. 
And then over here, we have my favorite out of the Avenger series, the Avenger Warlock. My difference between that Avenger Warlock and the other two Avenger series is that this thing carries an EMP in the cargo bay. This is the EMP. Um, if you notice, you can't actually get into the door to access the bed on this variant, which is unfortunate, but I understand it with the with it having the EMP in the back. It's kind of cool that you can actually look at the EMP physically. So the only way to get in the Warlock is through the pilot seat. I'll show you this really quick, just so everybody knows, even though I have done a video on the Warlock on the channel, just but just in case. Ooh, yeah, those frames are getting a little oof. So, it still has a bed. You just have to access it this way. See, like, the door is in here, and it's even got the danger high voltage and caution radiation stuff uh, from the EMP in the back. But it still has the bed. You can still log out, and the uh, stalker also has a bed as well. But, so, it's kind of annoying, like, if you go into the bed, to get out of the ship, you have to enter the pilot seat. And then if you hold Y to uh, get out like you normally would, you get out the same way you saw me get out earlier. So to actually get out of the ship, you actually have to do uh, hold F and hit exit ship here. And then you actually get out. So it's a little annoying, but th that EMP is extremely useful. And I absolutely love it. And this is the Avenger Titan Renegade. This is just the Avenger Titan, the standard Titan. See, it's got the open cargo bay with a different paint scheme which i'm not a huge fan of blue and yellow it's part of the reason why i don't like the the sentinel when it has its standard paint scheme but still a honestly i think it looks better than the sentinel i'm not gonna lie uh, i just don't I, I don't know i there's something about the blue and yellow and the sentinel i don't like this one doesn't look bad but it's still not something i would get um it's like an extra like I don't know how it, it you spend extra money for a standard titan just for this uh just for this paint scheme just like for the uh, saber comment so i mean if you want it go for it it's your money but you can't buy this one in game same with the saber comment as of right now at least um uh, correct me if i'm wrong though um but if you if you want it go for it if otherwise if you just want the titan and there's some cool ass titan skins out there too so you don't necessarily need this so it's up to you it's your money and then this is another beautiful ship. Dude, Aegis ships don't mess, dude. They really don't. Oh, by the way, you see that right there? See that right there? That's the uh, Redeemer missile rack that you're not supposed to take off. And you can take off currently. It'll get fixed. But those are the missile racks I run on the Sabre, on the Vanguard, and now also on the uh, Corsair. So on the Corsair, I'm running 32 size twos. So yeah, that's fun. And I also had six of them on a uh, on a Cuddy uh, Blue. So that was uh, absolutely absurd. But yeah, this is the Aegis Redeemer, a, a just a powerhouse of a ship, especially fully crewed. Uh, you, as pilot, you get control of two size threes and two size fours, um, unless you have uh, somebody in uh, the remote turret for the front. Because this is technically a remote turret right here. Then you only have control for those two size fours. But if you don't have anybody in there, which I would recommend don't not having anybody in that remote turret, the pilot has control of two size threes and two size fours. And then you have two um, man gunners with two size fives each. And each of those guns come standard with 85B Gatling ballistic guns. Nuts. Absolutely nuts. This thing is an absolute powerhouse. And I love it. I don't know if I want to pledge one or not. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I own three in game, but it's because of the missile racks. And then you have another remote turret back here. It's 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 actually faster than the Vanguard in a straight line. Did you guys know that? The Redeemer is faster than the Vanguard in a straight line. I tested that out because I had trouble keeping up with Wolf one day. But yeah. It's got common amenities. It's got a little kitchenette. Um, four beds. You go up the ladder to get up. Oh, 
You got the front man gun here. The pilot seat there. These are the two remote turrets. And then the final man turret is right here. It's all your component housings. And it's also got jump seats. So it's really good for uh, dropping troops off and providing support. It's a very, very good ship. And I, if I don't get any clips, I'm going to get one of these. Like I'm not, I'm not lying. I might get any clips, but honestly, I, I think I, I think I might just end up getting one of these. The Redeemer is a fantastic ship. So now we're gonna run over by the uh, like the Gladius and the Hammerhead and the Vanguard series. Oh man, I love Ages Day. I can't believe I've owned all of available, or at least one type of all available Aegis ships. So, uh, maybe maybe I'll claim my Reclaimer just for shits and giggles. But it'll take me a little bit to walk around that thing for you guys, so I don't know if I'm going to do that or not. No, it'll probably be similar for uh, Anvil Day as well, where I don't have a, necessarily have a ship to rent because I also like Anvil. RSI Day, I'm gonna have a field day though. Who knows? I might pick up. There, there, there's probably, I don't know. Like I'm like, oh, I might want, I might want, like, th this is dangerous. I don't have enough money to pledge for everything that I want because. At first, I was like, I don't know what ship I want. Now that IAE is here, I'm like, I want everything. I want it. I want you. I want you. I want you. And yeah, you can buy every ship in game. That's not that big of a deal. Like, you really can. That's not hard to make money. It's just, you know, there's something about owning one that you never have to, like, pledging for one where you never have to buy it in game again, essentially. Oh, so we are taking on the bombers first. So we'll check out the Eclipse. The Eclipse is actually, I posted a short little video. I'd call it more of a clip than anything compared to my other videos of me using full, it's all grade A stealth components with EM size nine torpedoes. And I actually was able to torp a player in a Corsair without him even knowing I was there. That is the power of the Aegis Eclipse. By the time they know you're there, they are already dead. And it's great. It's a gorgeous looking ship too. And the, uh, it, I literally, it's literally a bird of prey. Like just look at the, uh, at the nose and the canopy of this thing. It's literally a beak. If we open it up here, it just, it, it's a beak. It's seriously a beak. So I'll do a full showcase on this here soon because I don't have a proper showcase on the Eclipse on the channel, but it's a powerhouse. I mean, once you're out of torpedoes, you kind of, you're kind of useless because it's only got two size two hard points, but that's, it's not made for a, a prolonged dogfight. You know, it just needs those guns to defend itself so it can get away after it launches its torpedoes, launches its payload. It's very specific in its role, but when you put it in the right situation, it is dangerous, extremely dangerous. As, as if you haven't seen that video, that's the uh, uh, Stealth vs. Corsair PvP video. If you, if you want to see that, check it out. Um, in that right situation, it was terrifying. Like I said, that dude and my buddies there had not, did not have me on radar. I did not, and Chief was in an Eclipse too, and I did not have him on Radar. So, stealth works, man. And when it does, this thing is a complete, utter powerhouse. I love it. And then here, when you basically say, fuck stealth, I just want to torp shit. The Retaliator Bomber. It, in my opinion, it still looks stealthy, but, you know, when you come into a into a situation in a retaliator 
people know you mean business. Whether you are fully crewed or not, this thing is extremely dangerous. The Eclipse holds three size 9 torpedoes. The Retaliator holds six size 9 torpedoes. It is an absolute powerhouse. And I'm not sure if as a, a whole or just as a combat ship, but this has the highest hull HP in the game, I believe, in terms for combat ships, if not all of the game. Because, actually, I don't remember the reasoning. I know it has over 400,000 hull HP. So, it's it's beefy. So, yeah, when you say, I want to launch torps, but fuck stealth, and you just want to haul in there and just launch some torpedoes, retaliators for you. And it's great for a multi-crew gameplay as well, because it has... Uh, two, four, it's got six uh, man turrets on this thing. So it's great for multi-crew. If you have this fully crewed and you've got the pilot launching torps, because those, those are the only weapons the, the pilot controls. And then you have everybody in a gun. Oh my God. This thing is a force to be reckoned with. It's absolutely nuts. I love this ship too, but it is not something I fly all the time. It's not something I plan on flying all the time. So it's not something I would pledge personally. But if you want something like this, go for it. Um, it's only about four million games, so it's actually not too much. Um, I don't remember how much the Eclipse is in game, but the Eclipse I have more use for, so I might actually pledge it. I don't know. I'm going to wait till the end of IAE before I buy anything else. And then see what I really, really want. Because I can only really buy one ship outright. Well, that's what I can afford. So, all we have left is the... Oh. Oh, yeah, pixels. Okay. Oh, right, so we now we have the Vanguard and the Gladius and the Hammerhead. So we got to go to the other side of the hall. I think I'm getting lost here a little bit. Because I could have... I could have sworn... Oh, I'm losing frames. Damn, micro suck. Ah, that's why. I made a wrong turn over here. Actually, maybe not. I'm lost. Hold on one second. All right, now I realize what I did. So I checked out the Avengers series first, and then I went all the way. I literally, I'm literally doing an X, which I didn't mean to do. But I went from the Avengers... To the, to the bombers, Nama, the vanguards, and then I'll be hitting up the uh, Gladius and Hammerhead last. Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to hit up the Gladius and the Hammerhead next instead of the vanguards because I will be at the vanguards for a while. I think I can tell I, uh, I, I use the Aegis Sips a lot and I know a lot about them because of the fact that we're at 25 minutes already and I still have yet to get through all of the Expo Hall. All right. So we'll check out the standard Gladius first. And this is the obviously the Aegis Gladius. It, does, it needs no introduction. It is the premier light fighter of the UEE Navy. And honestly, out of the entire player base, because everybody loves this thing. Um, a lot of players say it's the best light fighter in the game. Other, other people say the arrow beats it. Personally, I prefer the arrow because I'm hit less. And um, it's got four guns. Does that really make much of a difference? No, not really, especially in the pilot. But that's just my preference. The Gladius is still a wonderful ship. Absolutely wonderful. And it's completely gold standard. So when you turn that thing on, it's like you, you have the animation to flip all the switches and stuff. It's it's fantastic. And that's, that's true across all the Gladius variants. Look, this dude's like praying to the Gladius. He's like, oh my god, the Gladius, the best life fighter again. Actually, no, he looks like he's scared. 
whatever. But yeah, it's completely gold standard. You got a weapons rack on it. All your, your component housings. Um, I think you also have some components stowed up top too that I can't quite get to. You got some external storage here. You actually have fuel access here, which is I think is interesting. And more component housing here. And I believe I believe the shields are actually stored up top. So that is the Gladius. Here is the Gladius Valiant. It this is the same case as the Aegis uh Saber Comet and the regular Saber. Um it com all it is is a different paint scheme, and it's not much different to be completely honest with you. I think the yellow's a little bit darker. And the green's a little bit darker or something like that. The paint scheme is not much different. It really isn't. And it's got that little like emblem on the on uh, the fin there. Um so definitely not something I recommend buying. I mean, you get a slightly, very slightly different paint scheme and a different uh starting weapons loadout when you're gonna change the weapons loadout anyway. But other than that, it's literally the exact same as uh, the standard gladius. Same with the Pirate Gladys, which actually is not here. It's just a different paint scheme. It's a great paint scheme, but um, it's still the same as the standard Gladius. There's also some really cool Gladius paint schemes on the RSI store. I'm not 100% sure if all of them are there right now, um, but like there's an Invictus skin for it. Uh, there's a Solar Winds for it. You get, um, uh, I think there's like a white camo one. And, uh, actually, I can't remember. They do need to make a black paint scheme for the Gladius. I'd fly the Gladius if, uh, more if it was black. And then here is a, um, a Corvette class. It's not, it's not a capital ship. It is a Corvette. This is the Aegis Hammerhead. This is the, uh, the menace you guys fight in all the ERTs. It has six manned turrets on it as well same as the uh, retaliator but this each man turret has four size four <laughs> four size four guns on each turret this thing is absolutely absurd and the pilot depending on your missile loadout you can you can do a bunch of different things with a missile loadout on this thing but the pilot has control of a ton of missiles this thing is absolutely terrifying with the new flight model coming out this thing is going to be even harder to take down because now that's it's almost kind of a meme you know you can torp them you can uh, get them with a connie i actually just killed one with a, with my corsair within a minute running full ballistics on it but once the new flight model comes out and they actually revamp the ranges and all that stuff and the guns this thing is going to be absolutely terrifying again and sometimes it still is so i'm not gonna walk around the whole ship it's a big ship same with same with the reclaimer i have a hammerhead video on the channel if you guys want to see it uh, but yeah it's it's a beefy ship so now i'm gonna actually gonna cut over to the vanguards because i have a lot to talk about with the vanguards all right now we're at the same map that i was at earlier when i realized i was close to the vanguards and i realized i was doing the next so but from that we go over here and we have some of the best ships in the game the vanguard series i'm going to start out there is not a bad vanguard none of the vanguards are bad none of them they are all fantastic in their own way so we're going to start over here actually no we're starting to center with the warden the Vanguard Warden is my favorite Vanguard because it comes in black and it's it's the fastest in a straight line but other than that it's just the the straight up brawler variant you know I can hold its own in the fight and they all can hold their own in the fight but this is fastest in the straight line and it, it is made for uh combat just all out fighting that's what it's made for it's a great ship it is one of my favorite ships of all time and it's obviously I have dozens. No, I won't say dozens, but I have probably about eight Vanguard videos on the channel. It's absolutely absurd. 
whether it's covering the the warden or one of the other vanguard variants but yeah the warden is my favorite purely because it's black and it's fastest in a straight line and it fits my play style as a brawler um here we have the vanguard ha harbinger harbinger I can tell by the, the, the stock put out on the nose. Uh, but this is the Vanguard Harbinger. It's, I, I would say it's probably if the, the community's favorite Vanguard. Um, because it carries size 5 torpedoes. This is a bomber variant. And it can still hold its own in a fight. But it feels, all, it feels slightly heavier than uh, the other uh, Vanguard variants. Because of the added weight of the added ordnance. And that's about it. Um, it still holds its own in a fight. You can still do a lot of damage um, with its guns, but you also have uh, size five torpedoes. And if you put the Redeemer missile racks on it, as, as of right now, they still work. Uh, they probably won't by the time 318 comes out, but you can have 32 size two uh, missiles with three size five torpedoes. And this thing, it, 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 it's absolutely scary. The Harbinger is a, gr is a great ship. Uh, especially for people who like to throw missiles, which I, I do enjoy. It's just I'm more of a brawler. I'm more in the like the dog fighting, gun fighting thing. But yeah, and this is the Vanguard Hoplite. The Vanguard Hoplite is the drop ship variant. As you can see, it can still hold its own in a fight. It really can. Um, they all all Vanguard variants have a size five hard point underneath the chin. And the size two bespoke uh, weapons that can all be changed out for either like uh, ballistic repeaters, ballistic cannons, laser cannons, uh, laser repeaters, and there's also distortion repeaters and distortion cannons that all can go on the nose, um, specifically for the Vanguard. So you, you can get a lot of different loadouts out of this, out of the Vanguard series. And um, I've done a lot of them, so you can get a lot done with it. And with the damage, these tentacle size twos uh, uh, and the nose like that, they actually do a little bit more than standard size twos on regular ships, but a little less than uh, size threes on regular ships. So I call them size 2.5s. But with the combination of those nose weapons with the size five gun on here, this one has a standard, uh, has a size four gimbal underneath. Um, Actually, I think they all come set stock with a size four gimbal. But if if the only thing I would say is if you're running repeaters like laser repeaters on this, go with a size four Rhino under uh, underneath the chin instead of a size five because you'll match your projectile velocity. Other than that, go size five all day, like seriously. But back to the hoplite. Sorry, I kind of got distracted there. I kind of started talking. But it, it is the dropship variant. I actually use this a little bit to see how well of a dropship it, it would make. And it's also good for search and rescues. It's got six jump seats. It's it's uh, got um, the turret, just like every other uh, Van Vanny does. And then obviously the flight deck there. It's also got a lot of missile racks. You do lose some of the amenities, like there you don't have a bathroom in this one. But as of right now, that's not important. Um, also, back to the Harbinger. The Harbinger has the best uh, man turret out of the Vanguard series because um, the Sentinel, the Warden, and the Hoplite have size two guns on the turret when the Harbinger's turret has size three guns. It comes stock with rocket pods, but take those off, put some Panthers on it, you're freaking good to go. So. And then the last one, which is also a community favorite, I, be I believe. It's, it's a very... It, it's a debate between whether the Sentinel or the or the um, Harbinger is the favored one right now. Um, the Sentinel, it, honestly, if the Warden wasn't in black and the Sentinel had was uh, or matched the speed as the Warden does in a straight line, this would be my favorite. With the Solar Wind skin, this almost became my favorite. It really did. I was using it for quite a bit. Um. The difference between this and the other ones is this one is the E-Warfare variant of the Vanus. Um, as of right now, it has an EMP, but the EMP is a temporary thing until E-Warfare actually becomes a thing. So we don't know when we're going to lose the EMP, but the Sentinel will lose the EMP at some point. But as of right now, it is the, 
I want to say the second best EMP in the game uh, next to the Avenger Warlock. The only reason why the Warlock is a little better is because its recharge time is faster and with slightly less range. This has the biggest range because I think the EMP on this range is 700 meters when um, the Warlocks is 500 and then the Hawks, if you're going to EMP, the Hawks EMP is only 300 meters. Um, but um, the Warlock is still considered to be the best one because the recharge time is like the uptime on the uh, Warlock is significant. But either either way, it's still a great ship. And it's also it's also the lightest when you fly it. And if, after flying all four of these for quite some time, um, the Sentinel feels the most nimble out of them because uh, technically it has the least amount of armor. But it can still hold its own in a fight. I can whip it. I can whip that ass around really quick. I mean, I can with the the warden too. But um, it feels slightly lighter than the warden. So, so yeah, that's the Vanguard series. That's that is Aegis Day. And yes, I know I had a lot to say about the Vannies, but I I the the Vannies are great. They are very good ships. And I would recommend any, I would recommend to anyone, whatever variant you think will fit your gameplay style, pick one up. Like I'm not even kidding. Um, the Harbinger and the Sentinel are the cheapest to buy in game, and um, the Warden is actually the cheapest on the Pledge Store aside from the Hoplite. But uh, if you're going to do combat, I wouldn't recommend the Hoplite. I mean, you can, you can, if you if you just want a Vanguard. You can get the hoplite, but if you really want to take it on a combat, actually no. There's not the like the, the the hoplite's the cheapest, followed by the warden on the pledge store, and I think the sentinel's actually the most expensive on the pledge store. When I think the sentinel's actually the cheapest in game, I don't know why. It doesn't make any sense to me, but yeah, those are the vanguards, and that is Aegis Day. I know a lot about the Aegis ships. I, the Aegis is my favorite manufacturer in the game right now. And yeah, but that's why I don't have a, uh, that's why I don't have a ship to rent. But I'm going to wrap this one up here. 40 minutes talking about ships, man. Holy cow. But <laughs> I'm going to wrap this one up here. That was Aegis Day. Um, if you are looking to get in the Star Citizen for the first time, uh, my referral code is down in the description down below. When you make an account, go ahead, pop that code in, and then you get some added goodies or some bonuses when you uh, uh, buy a game package. Also, like I said earlier, channel memberships are live on the channel. If you decide you want to uh, support me uh, in a different way, uh, go ahead and check those out. None of my content is going to be locked behind a paywall, so it's not it's not a requirement at all. It never will be. I just figured I let you guys know, but. Um, Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, go ahead, leave a like, hit that subscribe button, and I will see you guys in the next video and around the verse. Alrighty, have a good one.